So, got a ton of nostalgia when I come out to this creek. This is actually the creek what, that taught me how to brook trout, uh, fish for brook trout. I'm uh, way further north from where I currently live. Uh, give you some hints, it's the home of the Sports Pal Canoe. You can look that up if you want. Um, so this is pretty typical uh, little brook trout creek. Uh, much more difficult to fish in this creek than the creek uh, that I fish uh, back at my home uh, south of here. Uh, what makes it really hard, actually, it's not so hard in the, in the fall. Um, in the spring, uh, second, summer makes it really tough because the water is not as deep. Here the water runs actually super shallow right now. It's, you know, at, at best maybe 10 inches deep. So we're at the summer low flow here. And uh, the trick is, as always, to find that deep cold water. Um, funnily enough, I, I met a, a guy at the hole I wanted to fish at. But I knew I probably wouldn't do too well there anyway because it's actually right up the road at uh, the culvert. So it's, it's super easy for anybody to fish. So the guy was there a little bit before me. I let him have it. Uh, I don't come out here to wrestle people for the best spots. Uh, I come out, you know, because it's, it's, it's great. It's so peaceful and quiet. So what I'm looking for here is I've got a, I've got a nice log jam uh, that is on a, a bend and I know there might be some fish holding up in this mess of stuff down here. Although it's going to be pretty tricky to pull them out because it's so uh, dense. There's lots of fallen logs and whatnot. Up at the culvert, it's a nice runoff because the culvert by the road pinches the water closer and it makes a nice deep pool with lots of oxygenated water, cold water at the bottom. So if I could fish there, I'd fish there first and then I'd move on. But I'm going to try my best to pull some out of here. Uh, and if not, I'm going to keep working my way down. I'm not hopeful, I'm not super uh, confident that I'm going to get my five fish today. Uh, but I'm going to do my best and try these little pockets in here. So keep watching. Alright, I, I decided not to fish at the other spot because the uh, there was too much of a mess and the water wasn't as deep as I hoped. It's actually not very deep anywhere, but I, I found a little spot over here where the water's, I'd say about a foot and a half deep in this little pool over the riffle here. So I'm going to try to get a line out in the current and I'm going to try to let it fall back. So I'll swing you around here. So you can see, you can see the transition zone between the light and the dark. So there's a, there's a little bit of a sandbar here, and then there's a dip. So what I've got to do is I've got to get my line out here in the run, enough that it's going to fall over that little hump into the dip. And hopefully the current's going to take it the rest of the way, without getting snagged, of course. Okay, that's far enough. Now I'm just over that little hump there. We'll see if we get a... Just pull back a little bit, see if we get a take. Now, I'm over the branch a little bit where I don't want to be. Okay. Now we can let it fall back and see if there's anything in there. And get out of all these trees here. Ah, the trees, the trees, the trees. All right, I'm gonna cut this tree down here and then we're gonna try it again. Okay, this is, would be considered a pretty decent hole. I mean, you could see what we were dealing with before. It was really shallow, sandy bottom about that deep. Uh, this, I can't see the bottom. It's nice and black and dark, which means the, the fish are going to feel pretty safe down in here. So I'm going to try 
to get down there without disturbing too much and we'll see if we can pull one out. I'm just watching my line to see if I get a take. So far not much. It's a little surprising. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Fish just jump right here. Okay. I don't know. There's a big mess of stuff. Let's see if we can thread one down there. Drop it right on its head. Oh, there we go. Ah, it's stuck in the tree. Pretty good natural little brookie and I've kind of hooked it not so well. It's not a big one but I've hooked it in the top of the head and so it's not going to survive. So better than release it and let it die. We won't waste it and even though it's not my desired fish, you know, not really gonna feed anybody by itself it's uh, better than wasting it so I'm using the same technique I always do I take a worm and uh, single single hook and a little tiny split shot up above here and then I thread my Pour them up. And then that's it. So, there we go. Just thread it on like that. We'll see if there's another bigger fish in that hole.